and in the uh, in um, what we really uh, concerned about those kind of uh, super matrix or super tree is to have a very large amount of um, uh, data and we want to combine it into one single thing and the basic concept is to combine data sets and doesn't matter it's uh, trees of data sets or the matrix of the data sets and this is bring back to the uh, um, uh, another arguments about why are we going to deal with these data partitions so for example we have uh, the uh, gene A for the 10 taxa here and we also have the gene B sequence for these two, the 10 taxa. Can we combine those two um, data sets and just to make another tree? Is, uh, is it okay or not? And there are some principle or theoretical thinking that uh, you should or should not uh, combine it. And those data partitions not only exist among the different genes, it also uh, exists within the, within the genes as well, like the coding genes and non-coding genes, should we combine it? Or even among the different codon positions. We'll uh, likely see some of the examples. Um, if I forgot, I'll, I should briefly mention, because, well, uh, in some case, if you only use codon position one and two to make a tree, and only use codon position three, to make a tree, sometimes you will get a different result. So then, um, should we combine it? Although it's within the same gene, or within the same coding sequences. And the theoretical thinking, um, the first one, uh, some people will, will say, you should always combine, because it's, uh, as long as it's from the same taxa, you should combine it. It's called a total evidence approach, and um, doesn't really matter uh, well, the confliction or something like that, and only if you are really uh, certain there's a horizontal gene transfer pr uh, problem. Otherwise, you should always combine it because it rep represents um, the part of the genome or part of the, your taxa. And some people they will say you shouldn't combine it because the different data sets, if they have conflict signal, it will basically mess up with everything. And um, you can get a very high support or nice result on separate genes and separate data sets. But if we combine it, you will lose all the resolution. And in some cases, yes, it's sometimes it happens. So, um, so you shouldn't combine it because you are, you are from separate, uh, separate PCR result or separate um, uh, analysis. And so there are some, some school people, they say, okay, we should combine uh, only if they are compatible. So what do we mean by compatible? There, there will be another thinking. Um, we need to run a test to decide you should combine it. So um, Miyamoto and Fitch, they are really pushing for um, you should have a separate analysis on a different partition. As long as you think this partition is meaningful. Uh, for example, if you have uh, two different genes, because the diff two different genes sh um, might have uh, different evolutionary history, different selection pressure, and a different part of the genome is located in the different part of the genome. So it's under different uh, evolutionary history. So you should basically um, uh, estimate the trees from those um, partitions as long as you think this meaningful. And, and also, uh, after you get the trees from different partitions, then you will see if there are any congruence from it, because it's, well, in their thinking, there will be independent research, so it's independent result. If, you are, if they are talking about the same thing, then you will have a higher support. Other than you combine the data and you just give one result, and this is two result, and it's one result. So this support um, is different. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> no. <laughs> if you have uh, uh, three genes, and you get three results, it's like a three different sampling, and you you uh, they all give you the same phylogeny. 
for example. So there's uh, three different independent studies. But if you combine those three things into a big data matrix and you got the same result, but this is just one study. So three studies versus one study. So they think this one will be better since you have three different individual uh, data sets. But it's just a way of thinking, I think. It's, uh, um, it's, it really didn't matter, uh, doesn't matter you should do this or that. And actually, I prefer to do both and to see if there's any problem uh, maybe pop up. And um, it's, it's possible. And some of the noise may be hidden under um, a small partition, but it will in, um, be amplified if you combine those things and you will give you a, a little bit different result uh, if you combine the data. Some, some, sometimes it's, uh, it happens. And many people will, uh, believe that um, because we are not sure about the, the meaning of the data partition, and it, that's very arbitrary. So you shouldn't do that uh, beforehand. Since you already got the, um, the, all the information, then you just, just throw in anyway. So um, they even think the, you, you, the best approach is to throw in all the information you can gather. Doesn't matter if it's good or not. Well, just throw in and to see what's the, the, the outcome. So this uh, is kind of a too extreme way of thinking. And in reality, uh, many people will use this conditional data combination and to, to uh, have this uh, cache test or partition homogeneity test to see if the two data matrices are compatible. And basically, um, this is a, uh, some option is incorporated in like, a, for example, inside uh, Popstar. And uh, that's an option you can use to choose um, the different partition and to, to let a computer to test if they are compatible or not. Uh, basically, they will see uh, if this, this, this partition and this partition, you can see partition one, two, and three. And to see if they contain um, conflicting signal. If they contain a conflicting signal, it's better to perform a different uh, analysis, analysis. They are not saying that you should throw, out, uh, throw away the data. Uh, instead, they, they just suggest that you should do the analysis separately and to get the results separately and to explain, uh, I mean, to interpret the, the data separately and, or in combination. So this is, uh, um, many people will use that to to deal with it, but many people, even if they do that, they still combine. Like I, 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 I did that because I just want to know um, the data. And as long as I am certain that uh, I have 10 genes, and the 10 genes are all from the, 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 the 20 Texas, according to me, um, then I, has, I don't see any reason like I shouldn't combine the 10 genes, I mean, it will be the 10 KB or 20 KB, and it definitely will perform better if uh, uh, with um, um, uh, a small data set. So I will combine anyway, but I still do this to see if there's conflicting signal uh, among the different genes, and that's uh, that's just a different approach to do so. So um, this is a, a summary data uh, for um, what we usually do. Uh, we got um, a different data sets, um, uh, either from different partitions or different genes. And we test this homo homogeneity. And if we accept that, we'll combine the data. If we don't accept, we'll separate, uh, we'll, we'll perform the, um, the analysis. Although, even if it's rejected, I still do that. But well, that's different thinking.